Hello, welcome to this video where we look at further at the tangent plane. Uh, in the previous video, we, we tied the gradient to the normal vector of the tangent plane, but that particular type of function that we were talking about was an implicitly defined function. That's one where the x, y's, and z's are all intertangled in, and there's no way to solve for z is equal to a function of x and y. That's not the standard type of way that you get a multivariable function. Standard type of way that you get a multivariable function is z equals f of x, y. And so um, we're going to figure out how to find a tangent plane in that case. And we're going to, of course, find out that the um, partial derivatives are related to it. So um, in general, when you have a plane, there's a point and there's a vector. Uh, let's call the point x not y not z not, And let's call the vector a, b, c. And there's this form of writing the plane where we have the following that's on the second line there. A times the quantity of x minus x naught and b times the quantity of y minus y naught and c times the quantity of z minus z naught equals to zero. That's not our standard kind. Our standard kind is ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero. But that's okay. This is like having y, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Yeah, it's like that instead of having y equals mx plus b. And so in general, we can have the equation of a tangent plane. That's where we're headed to. Right now, let's just talk about the equation of a plane. So we have this equation of a plane, and we're going to just manipulate this algebraically to get it to be z equals. So we're going to multiply. Um, we're going to move over the, the, the cz term and divide through by that negative c. So remember how we have y minus y naught is m times the quantity of x minus x naught? This is the analog, the, the 3D analog to that. z minus z naught is equal to something times the quantity of x minus x naught plus something else times the quantity of y minus y naught. Okay, just we can just rename these guys. This, this a over minus c, let's just call it capital A. b over minus c, let's just call it capital B. So this is a, a way to write the equation of any plane, not a tangent plane yet, the way to write the equation of any plane, you have z as a function of x and y, and our job in the next couple slides is to figure out what a and b are. We don't necessarily have to tie it to the actual uh, gradient like before, but it does have the elements of the gradient, the, the, the components of the gradient end up being uh, a and b. Let's see why. So we have a surface, z is a function of x and y, explicitly defined function, we have a tangent plane at a point, x naught, y naught, z naught. And what we're going to do is slice this plane, uh, slice this surface with the plane and have a curve of intersection. And we're doing it at y equals y naught. Make the slice there. And we get this curve. Call the curve C1. All right. And, the, and it goes through the point P. And tangent to that curve, we're going to call this line T1. Okay, that's tangent to the curve. T1 lies inside of the tangent plane. And T1 is also on the plane Y equals Y not, the one you sliced at. It's on both at the same time. It's in the tangent plane, but it's also on the plane y equals y not. So we can go back to the previous slide. The equation of any plane has this kind of look to it. But if y equals y not, then you get to lose that whole last term. Who cares what b is if y equals y not? So we have this, this line now, z minus z not is a times the quantity of x minus x not. We have to figure out what a is. Okay. All right, great. So the slope of T1 is going to be A. It's like, you know, y, y minus y not equals M times X minus X. This, that's the slope of that line. And 2D line, that's the slope of it. Okay. And so what would be the slope of that line? Well, at, on the one hand, the slope of that line is also the rate of change of the function in a direction that's parallel to the x-axis. Remember how you, you're at a point and you step in a direction parallel to the x-axis? 
that's going to give you the x partial. So the slope of t1 is the x partial, and that's what we were calling capital A here. All right. Now let's turn it and do it for, for, for um, slicing x equals x naught. We get another curve. Let's call it C2. And then tangent to that, let's call that line T2. That's a better drawn tangent line there. I have to fix that other one. All right, T2 is both in the plane and in the plane X, uh, in the tangent plane and also in the plane X equals X naught. So when you go for that equation, the X minus X naught term is going to go away and you'll just have Z minus Z naught is B times Y minus Y naught. And, you know, the slope of that T2 line then is going to be capital B. But also the slope of that T2 line, you're stepping in the direction of the y-axis. Sorry, it looks a little off. But you're stepping in the direction parallel to the y-axis. So that's the, that's the partial with respect to y at that point. So capital B is the partial with respect to y, and capital A is the partial with respect to x. There's no need to mention the gradient, but those are the elements of the gradient if you wanted to. So here's our generic equation of any plane. But when it's a tangent plane, we know the values of A and B. We'll have the A is the Fx, the x partial at x, x not y not, and B is the y partial at x not y not. Now use this when you have an explicitly defined function. Z is equal to a function of x and y. When you have an implicitly defined function, use the other one where you have a, to create this capital F function and take the x, y, and z partial as the uh, gradient. And those have become the coefficients on a, b, and c. All right, great. So now let's see this in action. Here's a generic function, pretty simple. 3x squared minus y squared plus 2x. Our point is 1 minus 2, 1. I'm going to find the equation of the tangent plane at that point. So the function is the, the, the z and the x naught y naught z naught is the point. What is the x partial? 6x plus 2. Plug a 1 and a negative 2 into that, you get an 8. What is the y partial? Just negative 2y. Plug a 1 and negative 2 into that and you get a 4. And just like that you're done because the rest of the format is there for you. Z minus Z naught is equal to this eight times X minus X naught and this four times Y minus Y naught. And so you get Z minus one is equal to eight times the quantity of X minus one plus four times the quantity of Y plus two. And if you want it in the standard form, just multiply it out. Move the terms over, set it equal to zero. That's when you're in this form that we have standard for our equations or for our planes. And there you go. Good job. All right, let's do a harder one. The square root of x plus e to the 4y. That's your function. Okay. What is the partial derivative? Well, it's a root. So 1 over 2 times the square root is, is the derivative. Uh, the animation's out of order here. I guess that, yeah, that's the partial with respect to x, but it should, it should have that listed there. I'm going to plug a 3 in and a 0 in. Now, the, the root becomes a 2. It's a 3 plus 1. And so, you got the 2 that's already out there, though, so that's 1 fourth. Wow, I wonder why those partials aren't there. Sorry about that. Uh, that line there is for the partial with respect to x, and this next line here is the partial with respect to y. 1 over 2 square roots of x plus e to the 4y times the derivative of e to the 4y. You can cancel out the 2 to the 4 if you want. And plug a 3 and a 0 into that. The root becomes a 2, and then it's a 2 on top of 2. So it's a 1. Although I didn't write that down. <laughs> All right. And then you just have uh, the z value is 2. So z minus z, not z minus 2, is 1 fourth of x minus 3 plus 1 times y minus nothing. And if you wanted to uh, just get it into the standard form, we can multiply everything by 4, clear out the fractions, and then move everything over to one side. But, uh, yeah, I don't know why, but this should say partial with respect to x 
and it should say partial with respect to y. I don't know why those are missing, but there you go. We did it. Thank you for watching. We have uh, looked at the equation of a tangent plane when you are given the function explicitly. Z equals a function of x and y. My name is Nikai Rimmer. I'm going to help you through this journey. Please ask me any question you like. Comment down below. Like and subscribe. Um, if you want some resources, there's my website. Plenty of educational resources there for you. And um, I'll, I'll be um, posting more videos. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care.